Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the PL300 exam preparation series where we are exploring the second learning path, model the data. In this video, we are going to discuss the topic implement time intelligence measures, which is part of the section create model calculations by using DAX. So there is a special category of DAX functions which are called time intelligence DAX functions and the measures that are based on these time intelligence functions are the time intelligence measures so these are very simple to use functions so we are going to have a look at some of these time intelligence functions and then we are going to see how these functions are used to build time intelligence measures so here is a list of functions the dax time intelligence functions that we will be exploring in these videos and in the first video, which is this one, we are going to have a look at calendar and calendar auto. So if you remember, we had a topic related to the common date table. And in that topic, I, I said that there are two DAX functions that can be used to create a calendar. So a calendar table or a date table is very important whenever we are talking about the time intelligence functions. So we slightly touched upon these two DAX functions but we did not explore these two uh, DAX functions. So let's go to the DAX.guide website and first have a look at these two functions and then see how we can use these functions to create uh, the date table. So first let's have a look at the calendar function and the definition of the calendar function says that it returns a table with one column of all dates between the start date and the end date. And this is the syntax of this calendar function that you just give a start date and an end date and it returns a table with a single column which has all the dates between the start date and the end date so it's a very very simple and easy to understand uh, dax function so here i'm inside the power bi desktop environment and i want to create a calendar table this is what the code that i have written this is basically a calculated table that we are creating and so this is the calendar function and here you want to give uh, two parameters first is the start date and the next one is the end date so this is the start date and this is the end date but remember that you need to specify the date function so that the 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 date that you specify is converted to a date value so this is the function that converts any of the any of the number that you give in the format of year month and uh, and date to a date value and similarly we have the same kind of a format for the for the end date so this is how you can create a calendar table so now i'm going to just execute this and see what is the output so this is the output that we get so we have a single column table which has all the dates between 1st of january 2005 to 31st december 2015 so this is the single column date table that has been created next we have the calendar auto function so let's look at the definition of the calendar auto so here it returns a table with one column of dates calculated from the model automatically and if you have a look at the syntax here it says fiscal year and month so normally we have in the calendar year which starts from january and and in December, we have a fiscal calendar that is a bit different than the normal calendar. So you have a fiscal calendar which might start in July and ends at the uh, last day of, of June. So let's say if, if you are using calendar auto, this is helpful in creating the fiscal calendar. So let's say if I want to create a calendar that, that ends on the 30th of June, then I just need to come here and I just need to specify the end month for the month of june and it is going to be the 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 value six so i will just pass here the value six then this calendar auto has another feature that it automatically recognizes the minimum and maximum date that are already there in any of the columns inside of your data model so it is going to come up with the minimum date and it is going to then come up with the maximum date and then based on the value that you pass here it is going to actually generate a calendar which starts from the minimum date and ends on the last date of the fiscal year month. So now let's look at an example. So if I just scroll down, so here I have an example where we have a filter function which is used to generate the date and here the, uh, the last uh, month of the calendar 
is is the third month which is the march so it, the, the last date here would be 31st of march and based on the data model then the, the filter is being applied that okay just based on the value of the date and the year just take the value of the year from the year 2015 onwards and then generate the uh, the calendar based on on that value so let's just copy this function and just uh, we are going to change it according to our data model and let's see how the calendar auto function works so here i have pasted the same code and just made a few changes i have instead of march i have put here the end of june so i want my calendar to end on the 30th of june and for the year i have maximum values in the 1990s so i said that okay just start from 1995 and go till the last value which is probably 1999 so here is the output of this code that we have run and you can see that here it is starting from 1st of january 1995 and the last date here is 30th june 1999 because we have specified june as the calendar auto date so in this way you can actually generate a calendar so this is another function that you can use to generate a calendar and you can give the month number for the last date to be considered as part of the date table that is going to be in your data model so this is uh, the, these two functions calendar and calendar auto are uh, are used in dax to generate calendar tables so we are going to look at some of the other uh, time intelligence functions and the associated time intelligence measures in the other parts of this video. So I'll catch up with you in the next one.